Hi guys, my name is Julia Widener. I am going to be a senior farm school chemistry major, minor in education. I am the one and only peer advisor for the UC Davis chemistry department this upcoming year. And I wanted to give you guys a little tutorial video on navigating some of the websites and platforms that UC Davis makes available to our students. I know the initial kind of figuring out how everything worked together was a bit confusing. So I just wanted to take a couple minutes, walk you guys through it. Typically I'm on my UC Davis for a couple reasons, like two or three reasons. I'm either trying to get to my schedule builder or I'm checking my grades. I need to figure out my financial aid. So here we go. So um, there is the option to kind of rearrange this platform that you have. It's like called My View or something. And for me, it doesn't really change because I don't really care about stuff that much because I usually come on here and then beeline for my schedule builder, which on here is called My Schedule. So let's go ahead and check that out. I'm gonna click on Schedule Builder. And if this is one of the first times you've been on here, never been here before, you got on here, you're like, what the heck am I doing? I would highly suggest that you add the Google Chrome My Schedule Helper, which is right here, and I will show you the cool stuff that it does. So let's go ahead and go to fall quarter because my schedule isn't finalized. Cool. So. Um, there's a couple cool features about Schedule Builder, which, um, you know, I use with some frequency, but my usual go-to is like, all right, I have to take Gen Chem for incoming freshmen. This would apply to you for some of my transfer students that are hopefully watching this. Um, you're probably going to be thinking about physics, that kind of thing. So let's just go ahead and look at chemistry. So I just put it in the search bar. So you'll see that everything's kind of uh, this pink color. Let me see if I can find any sections. Ah, okay, so then this green color means different things. So the red section means that with in my schedule, because I already have classes added, the red conflicts in terms of times. So you want to avoid those classes if um, one typically has priority. So for me, Whenever I build my schedule, I always build kind of my two STEM classes because those are top priority towards my major. And then I look for um, either minor classes or GE classes. Um, for some of you that are I get seed, uh, even though you've satisfied all of your GE requirements, you're definitely going to want to hopefully take a class you enjoy because the joys of learning. Okay, so uh, if I wasn't going to save one of those classes, so let's say I want to take this general chemistry class. I am going to just click save. My Wi-Fi is really slow. And scroll down. There's a lot of Gen Chem different sections, so that's why you see so many different categories. Not all of the classes are going to be like this. This does not mean that uh, each of your lecture classes are going to be like thousands of people or anything. Um, Gen Chem is typically a really large class, so just kind of keep that in mind. But first, I'm going to show you the kind of most convenient way to look at your classes is through calendar view. So that was just that little drop down. Um, print isn't that important. I remember at freshman orientation, we were like, oh, here's your schedule. Um, if it is helpful for you, once it, you're, you finalize your schedule and just nice have it on the wall, you can use that feature. Finals are also important. So be cautious. Sometimes you can't avoid this, but having two finals on the same day sucks especially studying and leading up, unless you have like a project-based class and a final where it's like a written final, something along those lines, that's a bit more manageable because you can plan ahead. But if I had to take a OCHEM final and a physics final on the first day of finals, I think spring quarter last year, and boy was I not a happy camper. So if you can, please avoid that. I know it's kind of interesting considering everything's online. Um, yeah, but word of caution. So you can see this absolute mess of schedule. Kind of looks like a heart. It's gonna be a broken heart, but you know, the end of this quarter. But um, yeah, you can also see where stuff overlaps. So see this? 
This means that if I selected Design 127, while well, I already registered for EDU 122, this design would come up as red when I looked it up initially. So yeah, I'm gonna go back to list view and kind of break down because a lot of people are like, what the heck do these things mean? I'm gonna break down these three parts because if you look at it initially, it's like this literally says discussion laboratory twice. What the heck? So um lecture is lecture, which is usually especially for like a gen chem class, go to a big lecture hall. Tendence is mandatory depending on who your professor is. And then discussion laboratory, so you see this 7 to 10 p.m. So it's usually a three hour lab class. You go to the lab building. Still don't know what they're gonna do for next quarter. Don't really know what they did last quarter, but this is the breakdown. Lecture, and then the really big block is your lab time, and then the shorter block is your discussion. So for like Gen Chem specifically, you go with a room of like with your group of peers that you also had in your lab class, move to like a smaller classroom for a discussion. Some professors have you do practice problems or like challenge problems, or if your TA is super chill and actually understands the student experience, is like, all right guys, what does not make sense? And we'll kind of go from there. Okay, cool. So I Important. So some of you, especially if you're transfer students and you're looking to get into upper div classes and your units don't transfer or whatever, by the time that you're trying to register for classes, like you do not have the prerequisites that you need for this class. There is an option to petition. And let me find a class that I know I have no business being in. Okay, so here in this pretty little box, you can create a prerequisite petition. Let's go ahead and look at that and see what it looks like. So if you, for example, did all these prereqs, but the system hasn't received it yet, a really nice way to do this is, I believe the professors actually are the ones that go through this. I could be wrong on that, but even if the department sees it, you can be fairly casual, but so, along the lines of like, I took class, this physics 100 at uh, this uh, JC or college. Um, I have satisfied the prerequisites according to the course catalog, and then you can upload a PDF or a JPEG and that kind of thing. Um, so don't fret if you know you're good, because there's another way to check it um, if the system hasn't quite caught up. So. Lastly, um, cool feature about Schedule Builder is if you're looking for like that, those two kind of additional classes that's like GE, Fluff, um, or you're still working on satisfying your GEs, this is a great way to pinpoint a type of class that you need out of the course catalog. Typically, the two categories that I find most helpful are like, okay, I know I have most of my STEM classes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so I can look for something Tuesday, Thursday. Um, starting time and ending times do limit you a bit, but if you know you're a morning person, oh, I know to my incoming freshmen, I was you at one point, and I caution you. You can pull off a 7.30 and 8 a.m. lecture for maybe, maybe two quarters, maybe. If you're like a morning person, I don't know what happens, but that whole mentality of, I got up at 5 a.m. every day, I went to school, I like did things for 12 hours straight, and then got four hours of sleep, and then did it all over again for the next 300 days, I don't know what happens in college, but it's not the same. So please be kind to yourself and, you know, pick lecture times that you really think you'll make it to, i.e. 10 o'clock or later. Because I know some sophomores that like would 
barely make it to their 9 a.m. So you're sitting here like, 9 a.m.? That's me sleeping it? No, I promise you. Ah, shit. Okay, now that little spiel of wisdom is out. Show advanced options. So here's like the most helpful part of like if you're trying to hit your GE requirements. There is a chart that I have in a handbook somewhere on how to read this thing. But, um, so I'm assuming, we're gonna take me as an example, I'm a STEM major. So for my minor, I'm in education. So that's a lot of arts and humanities, a couple social science classes. This helps me overall. I've seen some STEM majors try to also do STEM minor, which is fine, great. You're super STEM brain, love it. But it's gonna be, you can't neglect the arts and humanities and the social science aspects of your major. So make sure you're communicating with your college advisor, not your department advisor, but your college advisor about what's a good plan of attack for you. Um, I would also recommend your college, your, let me try this again. Your department advisor will know something about these things, but this is not their expertise subject area. So as a student, I can kind of give you a wide overview of what you should aim for. I think that covers schedule builder. 